Hello and welcome back. Today we are lucky enough to be trying out a whole bunch of strobe modifiers that Profoto sent us. And it's super exciting because depending on Alex's behavior depends on whether we're going to try out some attitude modifiers for Alex, but hopefully we'll just get to stick with the strobe ones. Basically, we've got a ton of modifiers. We're going to show you what they do, why they do it, how they do it, and Alex is going to take some beautiful photos and uh, make everything good. Yeah, let's get started. Okay, guys, so first things first, we have our lovely talent for today, Grace, our intern and photo assistant. And we're starting off right now with a bare head. We're calling this a bare head test, but in actuality, we're using a D1, and it has a piece of ground glass in the front. So it doesn't really have the same effect as a bulb that shoots light out the sides in every which direction. The ground glass still does throw the light all over the place. So it's a pretty close example. All right, guys, we've got our bare head on our D1. And the first um, important thing we're going to do is meter. So got my light meter. I'm going to go over here. Beep, 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 beep. OK, this is saying four and a half. But what's weird is if I go right here, it's also saying four and a half. And if I go right over here, Ah, oh, it's gone down to 2.88. Hang on. If I go right over oh, here... Oh, you're in her shadow. Also saying F4. So basically, what's happening with this bare head, it's going everywhere. Alex, you want to make some pictures? Yeah, let's see what it looks like. Oh, my God, you're so gorgeous. I love oh, it. But you know what? I'm a little doubtful about four and a half. Huh? That's it, right? That's perfect exposure. I guess it's a taste thing. That's a perfect exposure. It's not what you want, but the exposure's right. Okay, that's, that's fair. So right now, what we have is a, a pretty boring photo, but you'll see that it's just thrown light everywhere. The only place we have any shadow is where the source has hit Grace and created a shadow directly behind her. And it's because with this bare head, we have two things. We have light going everywhere, but we still have a really hard source of light. All the light is coming from one condensed area, and so it gets that hard punch. We have a hard contrast and a hard contrast in the shadow. Ladies and gentlemen, the humble reflector. This is a seven inch reflector. Um, it's a pretty common piece, and uh, basically, this is quite similar to the ground glass, but it does focus the light a little more when it comes out. Let's see what it does. One thing to note on Profoto, which is a good thing to notice, is they have a little scale here. The further back you push any of the modifiers onto the head, the more spread the light will be. The further forward you pull it, the more focused the light will be. So for a sense of fairness, we're kind of go, going to go in the middle. And I'm just going to focus the light on the center of Grace. Oh, Grace. So complimentary with the colors. So right off the bat, we can see one of the things that happens with the zoom reflector. When it focuses the light, it actually ups our exposure just a little bit. So what was previously a perfect exposure with light escaping all directions, it's slightly overexposed. Mark, should we maybe re meter? meter again? Just as a rule of thumb, though, we are two thirds of a stop pot. Okay. 5.61, Alex. Two thirds. Right off, we can see we've hit our exposure now that we stopped up two thirds of a stop. And we can see the effect it's had. Because the light's not going everywhere, it's not as bright in the background. It's not bouncing in and filling her edges, so we have more contrast on her shoulders. And also, by using that zoom reflector, we've actually made the light source a little bit smaller. So we have more contrast, and we get more definition and shadow. Some people might call those more juicy shadow detail. Oh, juicy. 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 Um, but this is the basic happenings with a zoom reflector. 
I personally would never use a zoom reflector like this, but I might use one with a grid, which is our, our next setup. Come and see this. So this is a grid set made for a seven inch reflector. The ones that we have are a 10 degree, a five degree, and a checking 20 degree. So we're gonna show you all three very quickly. One thing about zoom reflectors, guys, is that you have to be a little careful with them because when you get some bumps like my old guy has here, it makes it kind of tough to put a grid on it. But let's see what it does. Not just as our contrast increase, increase, meaning that the dark areas get darker and the bright areas seem brighter. Making the grid size smaller or going down in to a smaller degree angle, what we've done is we've focused the light. So we still have the exact same power, but it's going in a perfectly straight line. And it doesn't have the ability to wrap around. So what we've done is make a smaller, harder light source. And the result is, our contrast gets harder and harder and harder as a result. All right, guys, so this is also a reflector, and this is the Magnum. Um, this is a parabolic reflector. It's much bigger than the seven inch reflector. And, you know, let me show you inside this. Inside here are all these lovely dimples, and that helps to create a specular type feel to the light which means that you're gonna get some more refracted highlights on the face. You can also put a grid on this um, and, and use it in similar to the seven inch. Now, because the light is so much more focused, in theory, just by putting this on, we should get an extra stop of exposure. Um, I'm almost curious about that, but, but, but let's try it and we'll, we'll do a real world test. Wow, F eight and a half. So just by changing this modifier, we've actually gone up almost a stop and a half. Mm -hmm. So that shows you somewhat of what a Magnum reflector does. Hopefully Alex will remember to change his uh, aperture now and uh, let's see what it looks like. Damn, that Magnum looks good, man. You really need a Magnum. It's not something I use, so I'm not so, sure why. So here's the reason. Why I'm, do I need a Magnum, well, Alex? Oh, well, we'll have that talk off camera. Okay. So. Right away, we can see what we've done. We've gotten a little bit bigger light source, right? So even though it still has that hard focus that the zoom reflector had previously, it's starting to wrap. So what we immediately can see is that our shadow's not as contrasty. Ah, oh, we've got some detail, detail in the shadow. Yeah, by making the light source bigger, it's starting to be a little bit wrapping. And even though it still has that hard punch, it still has a ton of contrast between there and there. Mm -hmm. We have all that punch from the reflector. Right. We still have a little bit of softness and in the shadow. And that's the light wrapping, wrapping around. around. Just by making the light source bigger. Love yeah. it. What I love about this snoot is that you can also wear it as a hat at kind of jaunty angle. So that's what I like about snoots. About, that's about all I like about them. But let's put it on and see what it does. Lock that in. As we can see, it's 5.6, a very similar reading to, that, to the one we had when we were using it, the seven inch zoom reflector. Cool, let's see what it looks like. Grace, you keep doing the Grace thing over there. It looks real good, looks great. Snoot. Snood. There's a snoot in the hoot and it feels very good. And good. Good. And it gives the picture a certain mood. <laughs> umbrellas. Umbrellas for uh, strobe come in all shapes and sizes. This is what's called a shallow white small. Um, it's a bigger source than our magnum and a bigger source than our reflectors, but inside is white. And that is going to give us a little bit of a softer light with less specular highlights than something that would be painted silver. Let's see what it looks like. Okay, Grace, you keep doing your Grace thing. Turn down a little bit. Ooh, that's pretty. Yeah, it's nice, right? Yeah. And so immediately by going to this bigger light source, uh -huh. we have light spilling everywhere. Uh -huh. But we can really see in our shadows 
that this light is a bit more wrapping and we have oh, all this detail wrapping. in our shadows. Yeah. That was, it's really nice. And if you look down here on the floor, in our shadows down here, you can see that the edge are soft. Are super soft. Yeah. It well, looks lovely. You know, one of the things that's happening though is as we get this source bigger and that umbrella is shaping in the light, mm -hmm. you know, we have that cone of light going out and we can assume that everything in the dead center of that cone mm -hmm is going to be basically what you metered for her face. And obviously, as you double the distance, it'll fall off. Right. But what we know is with a shape like that, a big open umbrella, is that on the sides of those edges, there's a dither. There's not the equal power of light. Correct. And so where the background is actually darker, which I think has been consistent with mm -hmm. all of our modifiers, we can actually see the fall off nice and neatly on the ground. And I think it gives more depth. apparent depth. depth. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Cool. And Grace looks great. Grace looks great. All right, well, let's go to a bigger umbrella and try something a little bit softer. A bigger umbrella? Bigger. Let's do it. OK, big umbrella. What size is it? It's uh, umbrella deep large. It's a deep umbrella, size large. Um, white interior, which is gonna soften the light and be a massive big source, but controlled on the edges, which is different from having an open bulb, and softer, obviously, mm -hmm. because it's bouncing into some pretty white material. Um, I know for a fact that Alex is gonna love this because he likes these umbrellas. Mm -hmm. Let's see what it looks like. I dig that. Ah. I dig that. So, uh, in the spirit of all honesty, you went down a stop? Yeah, a, a stop and a third. So, although this is how Alex wants the picture to look, it's not an even perfect exposure, but yeah. it's, it's, it's a good exposure, and it's how Alex wants it to look. That's beautiful, Alex. So, you can see how now our floor is more evenly lit. The fall off when we go front to back is more gradual, and her shadow has even less contrast in it than when it did when our umbrella was right there. I see that, it's beautiful. Okay, we are moving on to a Profoto softbox. This is a two by three. If you come a little closer, this has a silver inside and it's patterned, a little bit like the Magnum. Um, also does what the Magnum does in the fact that it uh, bounce, it re uh, refracts the light and makes it bounce everywhere. But the first place it's gonna bounce into before it comes out is this inner baffle. And then it's gonna bounce around a load more and then it's gonna come out through this soft outside uh, diffuser. Um, we are going to lose at least a stop of light, I would imagine, with this, if not a stop and a half. But it's a very soft light. It's um, easier to set up than, say, the bigger umbrella, which you need more space for. And it's super popular because it's pretty. You can use it with or without the baffle. Some people even use it without the front piece mm -hmm. to, to get like a similar feel as a bigger Magnum. But we're going to use it this way today and let's see what it looks like. Grace, doing your Grace thing. Chin down a little bit for me, Grace. And lean forward just a tiny bit. Look how soft these shadows are. Yeah, it's really nice, right? Yeah, big soft shadows. Not so, quite as soft as the umbrella. That's the right. The bigger umbrella. And it's interesting, right? Because the umbrella ultimately was a bigger light source. And the white did the light more than the silver. Mm -hmm but the actual diffusion panels give something a little bit similar. But this is where we can really see a difference with this guy, is this catch light in the eyes. And this is a slightly less natural shape That's right. than the circular shape that we had Hold before. Hold off and use that for the Octobox. We have these really nice details in the shadow. Yeah. Her earring, her ear, none of those things would be visible, you know, any other way. So the other big difference though with this soft box and that umbrella mm -hmm. is that umbrella source is so much bigger that is much more wrapping. And here you can really see like in the shadows on the floor that as you get to the center of the shadow, it's much juicier. It has a lot more depth. 
And you also see it, and for someone like myself who takes pictures of clothes a lot, I really like being able to see those contours in the garment. Right. And I like being able to see it in the denim. And that's going to be something you get more from a soft box than, than you get you from an from open umbrella. umbrella. Yeah. yeah. No, it looks great. I love this light. This is another soft box, but it's called an octa. And it's a three foot octa. You get bigger ones, but I like this little three foot. Now, it's called an octa for one simple reason, it has eight sides. Mm -hmm. Now you may laugh at that, but for the longest time I had no idea why it was called an octobank, but I do now. Um, very si similar makeup to our soft box before. It has the baffle inside and uh, diffusion on the outside and the silver lining, um, which as we talked about, refracts and deflects and does stuff to the light. Near, near enough, 4.04 .04 instead of 4.03. So pretty much the same reading, but let's see how the picture looks. And feet for me. Dig it. Let's bring our chin back, to, uh, come back kind of neutral. It's a little bit more the stop right there. Stop chinning. Well, I want to show how the shadow You're wraps chinning. around her. I'm chinning. Wow. Yeah, awesome, right? Yep. So again, pretty similar to our soft box, but now a little bit wider light, a little bit softer disposition in, in, in this transition of shadow. So we can see that now this transition from where that we have a good exposure into the shadow is even softer. It's just really, it's just really smooth and be really easy to clean up in post as well. And also we can see that that super square light in her eye has changed to that octagonal shape, which might seem like a small change, but it looks a lot more natural. Yeah, I, I it really like it. I pre so much prefer a circle or an octagonal shape rather than the, the yeah. hard square. And of course, the further back your light gets or the bigger it gets, the more it's gonna look like a circle and the less you're gonna see those hard edges. I think that a lot of people um, when they first start playing with soft light versus hard light, they really like the graphic feel of a hard light. But a nice soft light source is more forgiving for you to work with. It, Certainly. It allows your model to have a bit more flexibility in their position range, and you still get a nice photo. Yeah, it's good. Okay, so we have one more modifier left. One more modifier. It's a beauty dish. It's beautiful. Folks, uh, beauty dish. Um, you can get a grid and a sock for this. You can modify it, but this is how it comes. It's white. They do come in silver as well, which will be a little more specular, um, but the white one is gonna create a hard light, but with no hard center spot. It should be pretty much even all the way out. Is that right, Alex? Yeah, that's right. What's gonna happen is the light's gonna fire in through the back, hit that plate and a hundred percent of the hot lights gonna be bounced backwards into the modifier. Well, okay, so this is a properly exposed photo, but it's just uh, ugly. That's, that's the worst use it's just of a beauty look. dish I've ever seen. <laughs> so I lied to you guys earlier. I told you that we were gonna put our lights in one spot and shoot all these modifiers. But like, uh, you can do that with a beauty dish. There, there's one Make way to right. use a beauty dish, so yep. we're gonna do that real quick. We've moved our beauty dish. It's right here at a 45 down, and we have a little show card for a bounce table. It's gonna bounce the light back up. Let's see what it looks like real quick.
That was interesting. Um, I don't think I've ever done that before where I've done one after the other and looked at the results. At a first initial glance, you might think how similar they all look. Lights coming from the right, da 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 But it's the minutia of the detail that really makes a photograph pop. And when you find that light that you really love, it gives you so much more leeway to play around in post-production and really get the feel and look that you're looking for. So light modifiers are really, really important. Big thanks to Profoto. You know, you have to make a decision what kind of feeling you're looking for in your photos. And we hope this has uh, helped guide you get started on that. One question. Yeah. If you could only Oh, have big umbrella. I only use big octa boxes when I shoot, so big umbrella if I had to use one of these. Bye. See you next time. <laughs>